You know, the Royal Marriages Act of 1772 um, was actually very a very smart thing. It was issued with the purpose to, and let me read here because I, I forget things, but I'm going to read it directly because I read it from direct the Royal Act. It was repealed, so it's no longer in effect, which is a sad thing. But it was done... Um, it prescribed the conditions under which members of the royal family could contract a valid marriage in order to guard against marriages that could diminish the status of the royal household, its reputation, by marrying unsuitable individuals. So that act, and, and, and get this, is not to protect the king or queen, it's the royal house as a whole. Under that act, neither Camilla nor Meghan would, have, would exist right now. But unfortunately, that act was repealed. Now, in 2002, the, the king, it is very, very um, clear if UK, if the UK were to abide, or the royal family were to abide by the law of, of succession and, and the suitability of Charles to be king, he wouldn't be because he doesn't, it's very clear that he says that the, the king or queen or the monarch has to be in perfect communion with the laws of the Church of England. They have to be the defender of the faith. And that faith does not allow divorced people to succeed the throne. No. So what happened? What, what did they do? In 2002, they changed the, the church laws to accommodate Charles' whims of marrying Camilla. Nobody was saying that he could marry her as a private individual. Please, when people understand that, people for some reason think that Charles was forbidden from marrying Camilla. It's, it has never been that. It's just that if you want to marry her and be king of England, you can't. Because those two are not compatible given the rules to be king or a monarch of the United Kingdom. You know, it's like if you want to be a priest of the Catholic uh, faith, you cannot marry. You cannot get married. You cannot have sexual relations. It's, it's just, you know, and if you feel that you can't do it, then as much as you would like to be a priest, you can't. Or you have to be a male. You know, a female cannot be a priest uh, in, a, in the Catholic Church. You know, people may disagree with it. They say, oh, that's terrible. Fine. But then they don't have to be Catholics. Now, with Charles, he doesn't need to be king. As much as he bitches about the restrictions and everything, and the reason why he bitches about it is because he has broken every, every uh, rule, in my opinion. He has broken every rule, and he's still there. So, in spite of the fact that they change the church laws in 2002 were, and, and basically they did two things, which in my opinion, they only included this to cover up for the fact that divorced people were allow, allowed to marry uh, in church under exceptional circumstances. Because divorced people whose uh, spouse is still alive are not allowed to marry in church. Uh, and I'm going to get to Meghan Markle and Harry on this one. So... Um, they changed that in 2002 so Charles could marry, give him, him the option to marry Camilla in church because Camilla's husband is still alive. They do both of them, neither Charles nor Camilla, meet the criteria under which they could be allowed to be married in church because it has to be exceptional circumstances. Um, and yet they changed that. Now, there have been, because Charles knows that under the current um, access, succession rules and church rules, he is not in communion with the Church of England. He cannot, he's the head of the Church of England. He has been, and this is something that I've heard, okay? But he has been maneuvering to separate the, the monarch from the Church of England, to make him two separate entities, to allow him to, um, to be king without any 
constitutional impediments. And apparently, this is one of his major campaigns with Parliament because all he would need is approval from Parliament to do that. And apparently, he has been, this is what I heard, he has been writing to MPs. And apparently, Parliament would pass that, approve that law rather quickly to allow him to succeed without any constitutional issues. <sighs> Which, again... It's incredible because the, the laws and rules are there for one reason, not to be broken, not to be amended to fit the whims of a person. If this person is not morally suitable for the job, if his code of conduct does not meet his, 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 the requirements for this job, because remember, he represents a whole nation. Nobody's condemning. He's free to marry, but he cannot be the king under the, certain, the rules, the code of conduct to be the monarch. Um, now, regarding Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, um, <laughs> her husband was is alive. Her ex-husband is alive, so she did not. And the exceptional criteria did not um, apply to their wedding in church. So, legally speaking, constitutional, constitutionally speaking, and on the church rules, they know that they violated the church rules by allowing them to marry in church. And she even went in with a white veil. So whenever they have wanted, they have switched, bent, even completely violate or broken the rules. Um, and we have another thing with Sarah Duchess, uh, Sarah Ferguson. When she divorced Prince Andrew, the queen, Her Majesty the Queen issued a letters patent whereby she unilaterally decided that Sarah lost her HRH, the HRH, but she could be called the Duchess of, of York unless she remarried. And if she remarried, she would lose all the use of the Duchess of York, which is why she hasn't remarried. Because as much as she went in Oprah to bitch about the title, she sure as hell is not remarrying to lose it. They all, for every, all of them who bitch about Oh, the title and this kind of life. They all are desperately clinging to it. Charles could have easily married Camilla. He just would have had to abdicate the throne to his younger brother. Um, it's been amazing to watch how the House of Windsor or the Windsor family um, have basically denigrated the status of the royal household by allowing so much debauchery breaking of the rules. So my point that I'm trying to make this is that it is absolutely within Her Majesty the Queen's power to issue a letters patent to regulate the use of titles, to remove titles, to give titles. She can easily issue a letters patent state, uh, you know, indicating that if you are an ex-wife, you're not allowed to use a royal title. If you are an ex-wife uh, or if you are not a British citizen, you cannot use a royal title. Um, to, and again, it is a shame that the 1772 uh, Royal Marriages Act was repealed because it was put in place for that reason, to safeguard the reputation of the royal household as, as a whole, not just for the king or queen, but it's because it's such an important institution in the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth, and because it gives so much prestige. Um, the only thing that all these royals had to do was behave honorably, choose a correct partner, be a good husband or a wife, and not abuse or exploit their position for personal gain. That's all they had to do. And none of them have cut it. They all want to marry or be part of the royal household for personal gain and for their own fame, which defeats the purpose of being a member of the royal family. So for those who are saying that Her Majesty the Queen can do it, she can. But she has refused to do that. She has a lot, and I love her Majesty the Queen. People are st telling me that I'm an anti-monarchist just because I love an institution. Because when the institution is behaving and working the way it should, it's incredible. But it's not, is it? Prince Charles uh, in Parliament, instead of, instead of calling out Prince Charles, this is who wants to be king. He is a firm defender of pedophiles. He wrote a letter to the bishop, uh, Peter Bolt, to tell him that it was terrible how these horrible people 
in parentheses, these horrible people are the raped children of this bishop. Uh, how these horrible people were treating him. That if uh, he, there, he wished there was more he could do even to help him further. And you know what he did? He used money from the Duchy of Cornwall to buy Peter Ball, a pedophile, a home so he can live there with his twin brother. To this day, he has never apologized. And for those people who say Charles didn't know, he did know. He was told, and he did this after he he was informed that the what the police in 2015 that the police actively thought of him as a pedophile, and yet unwaveringly he supported him. So he, this is a king who supports pedophilia basically, because <laughs> he knew what the guys were. But he doesn't blame the pedophiles. Apparently, he seems to blame um, the victims. He, this is a man who's an adulterer, a liar, and who exploits his position, and. And the response of Parliament, instead of holding him accountable, they reform an entire information, um, Freedom of Information Act to cover up and protect all his mis 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 wrongdoings. I don't think this is right for the, for the UK people. It's not fair for the UK people, and it's not fair for anybody, really. And they should be held accountable. They are not above the law. So, yeah, in, in, in summary, the Queen can remove Harry's title, make him a private citizen, and she should issue a letters patent to protect the monarchy and the royal house, not just an individual. This is just my opinion, all of this, you know. Please give me more information if you know anything, you know, if you can add to this. Uh, please don't go into sophistry. This is an argument as to why things should happen the way they should, and that the queen does have the power to change things and has not done so. So anyways, um, Give me your opinion. Have a good day.